Greetings, I'm Tim Stringer from Learn OmniFocus, and I'm excited to take you on a tour of some of the amazing new features and user interface enhancements that were introduced in OmniFocus 3.0 for iOS. While I'll be focusing on the iPad, most of what I'll be showing you is also available on the iPhone. And here we are in OmniFocus 3. If you've used OmniFocus 2 for iOS, you'll feel right at home when you launch OmniFocus 3 for iOS for the first time. OmniFocus 3 is designed around three panes, the sidebar, the outline, and the inspector. The sidebar allows you to navigate your OmniFocus database, and is where you access both built-in and custom perspectives. The outline is where you view, add, and manipulate tasks. And the inspector allows you to customize settings specific to your projects, actions, and groups. Depending on the size and orientation of your screen, you may be able to display all three panes at once, or you may be limited to one or two at a time. I'm using an iPad and landscape mode for this video, so I'll be able to display all three panes simultaneously. Let's start by looking at the sidebar. The top toolbar has a button that allows you to hide and show the sidebar. You also have the option of having the sidebar pinned in position as it is now, or if you tap on the pin button, you can keep it tucked away until you tap on the sidebar button again, giving you more room to view items in the outline view. I'll tap the pin button again to put it back into the fixed position. OmniFocus settings are now accessed by tapping the gear button in the top left of the sidebar. An edit button also allows you to customize what appears in the sidebar. We're at the home level of the sidebar, and the edit button can be used to reorder, show, and hide perspectives. I'll tap done to leave this as is. Next, I'll tap on the I button to reveal the inspector. As is the case with the sidebar, the inspector can occupy a fixed portion of the screen, or by unpinning the inspector, you can opt to have it slide in when you tap on a project, group, or action, and then slide out of the way when you're done making changes. I'll pin the inspector so that it remains on screen, even when I'm not making changes. By default, you'll only see a subset of the options that you can customize using the inspector. This helps keep the inspector as clean and simple as possible. To see all of the options that are available, tap on Show More. If there are settings that you use frequently, you can make them part of the default inspector by tapping on Customize Inspector and dragging them to the Always Show section. Since I make frequent use of defer dates, I'll drag the Defer Until item to the Always Show section. Similarly, you can remove settings that you use less frequently. I'll drag Review from Always Show to Hide by Default. Note that the Customize Inspector feature allows you to customize the inspector for projects, groups, and actions. In practice, when you select a project, group, or action, you'll only see the inspector settings that apply to whatever you have selected. For example, Project Status will only show up if you have a project selected. I'll go back to the inspector and we'll look at one of the most anticipated OmniFocus 3 features, multiple tags. In OmniFocus 2, you can apply a context to a project, group, or action. This allows you to specify a condition that needs to be satisfied before you can take action. For example, there may be things that can only be done when you're at home, when you're with a specific person, or when you have an internet connection. A context might also be used to indicate how challenging something is, allowing you to distinguish an action that you can practically perform in your sleep from something that requires you to be in a focused state. OmniFocus 2 only allows you to specify one context. The problem is that not everything fits cleanly into one context. For example, maybe you have a deep focus activity that you need to do at home. You're forced to choose between assigning a context of deep or a context of home, even though both might be equally valid. This restriction has been lifted in OmniFocus 3. Contexts are now called tags, and while a tag can represent a context, it can be used for other things as well. For example, you could apply the tag today for everything that you want to get done today, and vacation to everything that you want to get done before you go on vacation. To apply one or more tags, tap on the tag button and add tags by tapping on them. You can quickly hone in on a specific tag by starting to type its name. Let's add the tag today to this item that was previously tagged with home. Once you've added tags, you can tap and hold to rearrange them. 
It's important to note that the first tag will appear in the context field in OmniFocus 2, but that none of the other tags will be visible. Now if I go to the tag perspective, I can tap on today to see a list of all of the things that I'd like to get done today. If items in this list have more than one tag, I can quickly jump to other tags. For example, this action is tagged with both home and today. I can see everything that's tagged home simply by tapping on the home tag, then tapping go to. You can also specify what's called a forecast tag. We'll look at this feature shortly. The repeat feature is also much more flexible in OmniFocus 3. Let's say you have a credit card bill that's due on the first Friday of each month. I'll start by setting the defer and due dates for the next payment. I'll set the due date to be the first Friday in June, which is June 1st, and I'll set the defer date to May 18th, which is two weeks before the due date. I'll then tap on Show More and Repeat, and I'll turn on Repeat for this action. I'll set the interval to be one month, and I'll tap on Days of the Week and choose the first Friday. I'll then go back to the main inspector view by tapping on Action. Notice that the repeat value has been updated to reflect the change that I just made. Now let's say that I just paid this credit card. I'll tap the status circle to mark this action complete. A new action is automatically created with the due date of July 6, which is the first Friday in July. And the defer date has automatically been set to two weeks prior. Notifications have also received a major upgrade. Since our pay credit card task has a due date, it automatically has a notification. On a side note, you can specify which notifications you want OmniFocus to create automatically by going into OmniFocus settings and tapping on sounds and alerts. If I didn't want to be notified when it's due, I can swipe from right to left and tap delete. I'll leave this one as is because I do want to be notified if this action is still incomplete when the due date and time arrives. So that I'm not left scrambling at the last minute, I may also want to be notified a few days before this action becomes due. In this case, I'll tap on Before Due as I want to create a notification that's based on the due date and time. And I'll ask to be notified three days before the due date. While this enhanced notification functionality is certainly a welcome addition, I encourage you to use this feature sparingly. If you get too many notifications, you might find that you tend to tune them out. Also note that notifications aren't a substitute for regularly reviewing OmniFocus. It's these reviews that will ultimately help you build trust in your system. Another great time-saving feature that's been added to OmniFocus 3 is batch editing. Let's say that I have a list of errands to run, and I've decided to defer most of them until the weekend. I'll tap on Edit to go into Multiple Selection Mode, and then select the items that I want to defer. I'll then change the Defer Until entry in the inspector to Saturday, and in doing so, change the defer dates for all of these items at once. This is much faster and more convenient than changing each one individually. Batch Edit can also be used with some of the other inspector fields. For example, you might want to assign a specific tag to items that you've selected. Speaking of tags, another new feature in OmniFocus 3 is the ability to reorder actions within a tag. For example, I can reorder these errands by tapping and dragging. The Forecast feature has also been enhanced in OmniFocus 3. Most notably, calendar events can now be displayed in line. In this example, there are a few appointments scheduled for the morning, and a couple of actions that are due by noon. Notice that the actions that are due in the morning appear before the afternoon's appointments. Also, you can now specify what's called a forecast tag. When you tap on Today, all of the items that have this tag will be displayed as long as they're not on hold or deferred to the future. To access this feature, tap the View button, and then tap Tag. I'll add my Today tag to designate this tag as the one that shows up in the forecast perspective. While I'm here, I'll also tap on Show Project Paths. When this option is enabled, the name of the project or single action list is displayed above the name of the action. I can hide the view options by tapping outside of this pop-up. Notice that there's a new section that shows the Today tag 
and it currently lists all available items that are tagged with today. You can add or remove this forecast tag to actions by swiping from left to right. A short swipe will reveal buttons to tag and flag, and a longer swipe will toggle the tag status. Let's say that I've completed a couple of the actions tagged with today. I can clean up this view by tapping on the Clean Up button. If you have an external keyboard, you can also press Command K, and in Compact Views on the iPhone, you can clean up by dragging down on the outline. One of the signature features of the Pro Edition of OmniFocus is custom perspectives. This feature has taken a major step forward in OmniFocus 3 for iOS. The Omni Group have done a great job of making this feature much more capable without making it overly complicated. Let's look at a couple of examples. First, I'll create a custom perspective that shows all of the incomplete actions that haven't been assigned at least one tag. I'll tap on the New Perspective button to create a new perspective. And I'll give it a name of Untagged. Next, I'll tap on the Icon button. You'll see OmniFocus's new expanded library of icons. If you don't see one that fits the bill, you can tap on Custom and choose a photo from your photo library. You can now also specify the color of both the icon and the name of the perspective. I'll tap on Color and choose Red. And then I'll tap on the Caution icon. Now let's specify the filter rules. In other words, the conditions that must be satisfied for items to appear in the perspective. I'll leave the availability remaining condition as is, as I'm only interested in displaying items that are incomplete. Next, I'll tap on Add a New Rule and then tap on Untagged. And since I'm only interested in actions that are untagged, I'll add a new rule of Is Not a Project or Group. Lastly, I don't want unprocessed inbox items to show up in this list, so I'm going to add none of the following, and then add Is in the Inbox. In other words, don't include any items that are in the inbox. If I wanted to exclude other folders, I can include them in the None of the Following list as well. In the Presentation section, you can choose how you want to display these actions. I'll group and sort entire projects, and we'll group projects by folder, and sort projects by project sorter. Since this is an advanced perspective, it won't show up in OmniFocus 2. I could tap on Downgrade Perspective to make it OmniFocus 2 compatible, but I would lose advanced features. I'll tap Save to save this perspective and I'll be taken to a list of untagged actions that aren't in the inbox. Notice that if I add a tag to one of the untagged items, then tap the Clean Up button, it will disappear from this perspective as it no longer matches the criteria. I can also make changes to this perspective by tapping the Perspective button. I'll change Group and Sort to Individual Actions, and we'll turn on Show Project Paths. I'll then tap Done to save the changes. Let's look at one more example. I'll create a custom perspective that shows me all of the things that I'd like to get done at home before going on vacation. I'll create a new perspective called Vacation Home. I'll choose green as the color, and we'll use a house icon. This time I'll change the availability to Available, as I'm only interested in actions that are available to be worked on. I'm also only interested in actions that are tagged with Home and Vacation. So I'll choose Is Tagged with All Of, and we'll select both Home and Vacation. I'll leave this as a list of individual actions, and we'll turn on Show Project Paths so that it's clear what actions go with what project or single action list. Finally, I'll tap Save, and I'll be presented with a list of available actions that are tagged with both Home and Vacation. To learn more about these and other features and best practices, be sure to check out the articles, videos, and live sessions on Learn OmniFocus. Some content is available free of charge, and if you become a Learn OmniFocus member, you'll have full access to all of our content, and will be able to attend our interactive live sessions. In closing, many thanks to the wonderful folks at the Omni Group for all the time and energy that they put into this release. I'm sure their efforts will help all of us be more organized and productive. This is Tim Stringer from Learn OmniFocus. Thanks for watching.